Hey guys, I just want to pop in a couple minutes early uh, and do some audio tests and uh, to do some, just make sure everybody can hear me. This is the first time we've done something like this for the <clears throat> for the GMA. And uh, I don't have a whole ton of experience with this webinar platform, but I've been using it for a little while, but I don't do a lot of webinars. Um, so, um, so we're going to give everybody a couple minutes. Uh, I got 11.28 on my clock right now. And um, and Amanda, thank you. You can hear me loud and clear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, well, then we'll just give it a couple minutes, and we will uh, we'll get started at eleven thirty. All right, perfect. Looks like the chats are coming in. Hey, I got a quick question. If can can everybody? see the chat on the right hand side can everybody see everybody else's messages just type a yes yeah okay perfect 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 okay great all right that's good and one other thing um i'm probably actually I'll, I'll just wait i'm going to repeat myself in about another minute uh when we get started uh let's see questions yes okay suzanne thank you Good, I'm excited. I am excited for this today. I have a um, somebody uh, that works with me. Her name is Heather. She's she works remote. Um, she's in New Jersey, and uh, she told me the last time I did one of these webinars that. If somebody texted me, it was so loud because my phone is on the desk in front of me. Um, so she, I, I, I promised her I'd put my phone on silent. So it's on silent, Heather. All right, cool. Looks like everybody's jumping in. This is pretty cool. We had 40 people register for the webinar uh, and uh, 25 are in right now. Um, but I, I think that most of you, if you had registered for the live workshop, uh, I'm pretty sure that just about everybody who registered for the live workshop actually re-registered to be on the webinar. So I'm excited about that. All right. Well, it's time to get started. Um, so just a couple of quick housekeeping notes before we dive right in. Um, obviously on the right hand side of the screen is an open uh, chat board. Uh, if you have uh, a question, you could actually scroll down and there's a spot for questions and polls at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you have a question, you can always ask a question over there. If you type it in the chat, um, I'm going to do my best to audibly answer any questions because I don't want to try to type and talk at the same time. That will not go over well. Um, so the right side is chat. The bottom is the question. And really um, what I want to say is, is that if, if my goal is to bring you a ton of value today, uh, not here to sell you anything. This is a digital marketing institute for you. Um, I will tell you about who we are and what we do, but this is really something uh, we've been fortunate enough to uh, have the Guilford Merchants Association uh, bring this to you. So what, what happened was obviously you know we, we should all be meeting in a room right now uh, in the conference room at, at the GMA headquarters, and obviously we're all affected with what's going on in the world. Um, so I wrote to... Um, uh, I think we originally we were talking, I talked to Sharon and Michelle and, and Holly. We, I said, what if we could do the, keep the Digital Marketing Institute and just offer it as a webinar so that everybody who's forced to work from home can get on and see it. And I, I think they, they kind of thought, what a great idea, but you know, we've never done anything like this. So I, I had the, I have the ability to do this. I've been working from home now for a number of years and I've done some webinars in the past, not a ton, but a few, and I knew that we could make this happen. So um, I want 
I want to give a special uh, thanks to Guilford Merchants Association for asking me to or, or allowing me to do this lens method webinar in the first place and be a, a part of the, the Digital Marketing Institute. And a special thanks for allowing us to go ahead and do this online um, so we can continue to focus on our businesses uh, during this time. So, and I hope every one of you is, is safe and healthy and social distancing and all the other great stuff. So, uh, with that, I'm going to answer one quick question from Wendy Loftus. The session is being recorded and everyone should get a replay afterwards. Um, just to get that out of the way, uh, this platform webinar ninja does record, uh, the webinars and, uh, you should be sent this later. We're probably, I'll probably be able to get through the slides in about an hour um, and leave it open for questions. I'm free till, you know, 1.30 or so. And um, I hope that I can answer everyone's question. And if I can't, you know, that we can stay in touch after. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and post a couple things in the chat room real quick, just to get it out of the way. Um, bear with me. It's just a couple of links to find me after this, uh, and hopefully they all come up for you to see them. The first one is JVI Mobile Marketing's pay Facebook page. The second one is a group for entrepreneurs and business owners called the Digital Marketing Assistant. It's a Facebook group, and it's it's designed to fall in line with our how-to uh, agency, which which is more for coaching and consulting. So. Feel free to uh, like us on Facebook and join the Digital Marketing Assistant group. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, so the lens method uh, and how to get 2020 vision for your social media strategy is something that we created a couple of years ago. And I, I often thought, wow, what a great slogan when it's the year 2020 and we've decided to focus this year on teaching people the lens method. Uh, we, my, my agency is called JVI Mobile Marketing. We have been a fulfillment agency to help small business owners with their digital marketing since 2012. We started as a mobile app company, moved into SMS and text message marketing, and then website management, social media management. And we have uh, grown to the point over eight years that five years ago I went full time with the agency and we are now moving into the next phase of the agency where we want to help small business owners by teaching them quote unquote teaching them how to fish um, working more on coaching and consulting and maybe outsourcing some of the fulfillment to people that are even better than we are at doing the actual fulfillment work so um, we are members of the Guilford Merchants Association. Uh, I'm a member of the Monday Networking Gurus group. If you're not in one of the leads groups by GMA, I strongly encourage it. Um, check with GMA to find out if there's an opening for your industry in one of those groups. A um, little bit about me. I am a, a husband to my wife, Devin. Uh, we've been married for going on 13 years and I'm the father to a four-year-old daughter uh, and two 60-pound lap dog pups. Um, in 2016, I became a certified digital marketing professional, which is a, a CDMP by digitalmarketer.com. That's the, the badge up in the upper right corner. Uh, it was a really intense uh, online education platform uh, and curriculum that I had to go through and, and uh, test uh, out of. I'm also a local marketing specialist, and two things that I really love as far as hobbies, uh, I love to play golf, and I used to play in a punk rock band years and years ago. Um, we were called Red Rover, and we were from New Jersey, so those are some some things um, about me. Uh, and I live in McLeansville, so I'm, I'm new to the area. We've been here two years, so I am in the Greensboro area. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, spent 16 years in, or 13 years in Wilmington, North Carolina, and then three years in South Boston, Virginia, just a little town up the road from Greensboro, about an hour 
and 15 minutes um, away. That's my wife's hometown. Uh, so then we moved to Greensboro about, or McLeansville about two years ago. All right, so this is what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, there's six things. Some of you saw it from the bullet points. Uh, what social networks should I even be on? When should I be posting to them? Uh, what should you be posting about, which is the meat of this presentation, which is called the LENS method, it's an acronym. How to save time with automation, how to create eye-catching images without needing to be a professional graphic designer or without using expensive tools like Photoshop, and also how to find an endless supply of great content. And number four, five, and six, there's a hint, and we're gonna show you a free free tool later to, to go through that. So. And every couple of minutes, I'm gonna check just to see if there's new questions and if it's pertinent to answer at that time, I will, but just know that in order for me to get through without being distracted, I may not answer your question right away, but I'm gonna leave plenty of time at the end to answer all of those questions. So um, hope, hope that's fair enough with everybody. All right, what social network should you even be on? Uh, I get this question all the time. It's the number one question I get. Um, people are like, well, I don't know if my business should be on LinkedIn. I don't know if I should be on Facebook. I don't know if I should, why would I need Instagram, uh, Pinterest? So really the answer depends on who's your customer. You know, if your customer is, um, you know, business to business, there's certain platforms for that. Uh, with like Facebook and LinkedIn. A lot of people say, oh, I'm B2B. Facebook's not going to help me. Guess what? It will. Um, you know, are, are you targeting busy moms? Uh, are you, you selling kids products? Are you selling, you know, what, what is it? What is your product and service and who is your target customer? That's the, the with any marketing related task that we ever teach, we have always, it, had, it has always come back to knowing who your avatar is, knowing who that ideal customer is for you. And, and here's kind of, I, I put in a few of these every once in a while just to hammer home the point I'm trying to make. It's really hard to target a, a message to just a 35 year old middle class working mother of two. But when you really break down your audience to say, hey, I'm targeting Jennifer. She's got two kids that are under the age of four. She's a paralegal and she's looking for quick and healthy dinners and, and ways to spend more time with her kids and less time on housework. That's how specific you should try to get. When we're trying to figure out our avatar, I want to know what books they read, what magazines they look at, what websites do they go to. You know, really try to pick out that avatar. And you might have more than one avatar uh, that you target, but knowing what those are will help you in your advertising and your digital efforts, especially in your social media, as often as possible. All right. So here are some of the network attributes, and I've only picked out a couple of key demographics for each network, um, just so that you can uh, kind of get an idea as to you know who who spends a lot of time on these platforms. These are some of the biggest platforms. I realize my face might be blocking Snapchat at the bottom, um, but uh, so Facebook. The key demographic on Facebook, uh, consumers and businesses, ages are between 22 and 65 plus, men and women, a lot of them are on using their mobile devices, a lot are not just using their laptops through Facebook, everybody has it on their phone. It's a very personal network, staying in touch, high engagement, you guys know what Facebook is. Um, I'd, I'd be shocked if anybody didn't wasn't on Facebook at this point. Uh, but it's very high engagement, and I believe all businesses, whether you're B2B or B2C, should have a strategy for Facebook. Uh, we'll, we're going to go into more of that, too. Um, don't worry. So Twitter is more news-related media. It's very short form, uh, very niche and topic-related. It's A lot of people like Twitter for customer service. They're typically younger uh, and 67% of B2B businesses are using Twitter as a digital marketing tool. I don't use it very much in my digital agency. Uh, I do see a need um, uh, for, for 
for it for certain businesses, especially high customer service businesses. But really, a lot of times it's news and media related businesses. Instagram, 18 to 49 year olds, 83% of users say they find new products and services here. Um, Instagram's an interesting platform. Here's the question I always say when people say, should I be on Instagram? I say, are you selling a product? Or do you have a visual, something visual that you can sell? Or do you have a story that you can tell? It's, you know, Instagram is a platform for entertainment and inspiration. Um, always, always tag and, and use citations of where you're, you're sharing stuff from. And the other interesting thing about Instagram is that you can't, and I see businesses doing it all the time, you can't put a link in your post. Um, it, it doesn't, it won't link anywhere. People would have to copy it and paste it. Uh, so if you have a link of something you wanna promote on Instagram, you're always gonna wanna put that in your bio up at the top in the about us. And you can put uh, a couple of links in your Instagram bio. And there's apps that help you uh, with that as well. So I can always <clears throat> point you in the right direction for those. LinkedIn. We all know, or most of us would know that LinkedIn is more a business to business uh, networking platform. It's uh, predominantly uh, a younger, um, you know, start your career out platform, uh, good way to find jobs, good way to find work, good way to find clients. It's actually 57% male, uh, but it's very for ambitious and career focused people. And um, that's, that's who's gonna be using LinkedIn. If you're using LinkedIn, you're, you're using it for work. Um, so for your career. Uh, Pinterest, Pinterest is a great platform and it's probably very overlooked. They have a wonderful advertising platform. If you are targeting mostly female, it's 90% uh, female on Pinterest, uh, very affluent network and they send so much referral traffic to shopping sites. So if you have a product, an e-commerce product, or you have products you want to sell, or maybe you you make things, or or um, you you teach things, uh, you know that's what you see all these recipe sites. Um, it's very good for how to, very good for learning, and if you have like I said, products and e-commerce, you have to be on Pinterest. YouTube. Somebody uh, that's in this webinar right now, Stephen, uh, he, he gave a stat recently that I, I was unaware of, and it was huge. Um, I didn't realize that YouTube was the world's second largest search engine, the largest being Google. The second largest search engine is YouTube, and that was very surprising to me, but, but then I thought about it even further, and I was like, well, Google owns YouTube. <laughs> So Google actually owns the top two search engines in the world, but so many people are searching. They have 2 billion monthly active users, all ages, split gender. I'll get into a little more statistics about that, but if you have how to or instructional, you wanna show somebody how to use your product or service or, or give people tips, we have a YouTube channel for, for JVI Mobile Marketing. Uh, it's a great video platform. And the cool thing is like, we all have these cell phones, right? I mean, that's how my business was started. I knew I had to teach people how to market on these devices and they all have really good cameras now and they can all take really good video. So it's not hard to start a YouTube channel and start putting some videos up. I think the biggest limitation is gonna be yourself. You know, oh, I don't know, I don't look good on camera, I don't sound good on camera, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you can, uh, you can you can definitely start making videos and putting them up on YouTube if it fits your business. And the bottom one, I know you guys might only be able to see chat. Maybe you can see the whole thing, but it's Snapchat. Snapchat has been around for a while now. It's actually, as far as daily consumption, it's the second highest social media network in terms of, of time spent on the network and daily consumption. It is mostly younger. If your audience is typically younger, it's a great place to be. Uh, it's very personal. It's very creative. Um, you make sure your videos, videos with sound, uh, the sound is going to play on those videos where you could mute those other ones typically on Facebook and Instagram. They do have an advertising platform. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't really use it very much because it's not my audience. Um, but it, it may be if you're targeting younger, 
younger consumers, uh, Snapchat may be one to look into. All right, so this is kind of a breakdown that I found. Um, the slide, there's a link to the, where I got the slide at the bottom. You may not be able to see it, but I, I may be able to send these slides out as a PDF to everybody uh, when we're all done. Um, this is a list of network recommendations by industry. So if your business is retail, it's saying that the ideal networks to be on would be Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Um, if it's in white, if the dot is white, it could depend on your content strategy. And if the dot is red, it's probably not the best um, network for your industry. So um, media, sports, uh, consumer products, uh, financial services, automotive, and healthcare. Uh, the best place for teens, Instagram and Snapchat. Best place for millennials is going to be Instagram and Facebook. And interesting enough that, that their research showed that the best place to reach a male audience is YouTube. I would strongly suggest that if you have, if you're not afraid to get on video, um, YouTube is probably the best place to reach any audience, YouTube and Facebook. All right. So it all comes down to this. Can it, can it help you meet your business goals? And do you have the time? Can you put the time and effort to be a user and not a company on the network? That's, that's what sh you should determine uh, to choose your network. Um, you know, if your audience is there, if it's the right, right company, but can it help you meet your business goals? And what I mean by be a user and not a company, let's say you were on Instagram. Are you just going to talk about your company or can you talk about life and uh, inside your company, a day in the life, um, tell stories? Can you actually be a user and do what everybody else is doing on Instagram and don't just be a, a, a boring company? And here we're going to hammer hammer that home a little bit. Focus on how to be social, not how to do social. A lot of people think of it as, as doing their social media, not being social. <clears throat> and we, we like to say uh, our hashtag is conversations create conversions. And you have to have conversations with people. The second largest question that I get is when should I be posting? Uh, let me go through and see if there's a question. Okay, let me answer a quick question real quick on that first part. Lisa Allen, um, please clarify the difference in Instagram videos and Snapchat videos. I think what you're, um, what you're asking, Instagram videos are, are different size and different audience. There, there's not a lot of difference. Um, you can do a lot. You can use different filters on Snapchat. It's, it's designed for younger people. And the videos on Snapchat are going to play with audio or Instagram. You can mute them um, or they'll, they'll be muted. And uh, the audience is similar. It's going to be a younger audience. Uh, and Instagram is owned by Facebook. So when you run a Facebook ad, you can choose to run that on Instagram where Snapchat is its own platform. So they're two different platforms. I, and I hope that answers your question um, without going too deep into the weeds. Um, all right. So section two, when should I be posting? And in my teaser messages for this webinar, I kept saying that it, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, I call it PBIT, P-B-I-T. Um, I like acronyms, if you can tell. Um, but it really depends on four things when, when you should be posting. And again, if you put too much stock into this, you're gonna get paralysis by analysis. There is so much data, so many conflicting answers, so many opinions on, uh, you know, when should I be posting? What days, what times should I post in the morning? Should I post at night? Like I said, you can, you can really get lost into the weeds on this one. If it, it all comes down to, are you putting out good content consistently? But if you want to know more, what social networks are you active on? It depends on the platform. Certain users are, uh, a cert certain platforms have more traffic in the mornings or the evenings or midday. Um, and what, 
what do you sell your in your I mean, so your brand um, posting quality over quantity and generate engagement is if that's what you're posting about your brand um, then I don't really think it matters all that much but if you're posting good content uh, and it and it targets your audience then it's it, it, it's it's not good it's gonna eliminate the need to worry about your times and, and days of the week uh, the industry you're in what do you sell and, and when are people in the mood for your offer so some people it is very specific a coffee shop all right if you have a coffee shop obviously the morning is going to be uh, like real early in the morning you want to schedule your posts to go out real early um, make your offers uh, do a lot of behind the scenes work and, and make sure you have a lot of posts through those prime coffee buying hours. If you're not in like that fast service industry, um, you know, maybe it's, you know, if you're looking, um, let's say you sell mattresses. I'm just going to throw out another example. You might want to advertise uh, at night and overnight through the night. Oh, my mattress is terrible. I can't sleep. Well, maybe the good times to have your posting strategy are between sleep times, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., right? People are, oh, I can't sleep. This bed stinks, and they're laying in their bed, or they're getting up, and they're looking on their phone, right? And, and, and again, it depends on the industry you're in. And then know your audience clearly, and then do research on your target. So you can look up and say, hey, when are my audiences, um, you know, 40 to 50-year-olds, uh, into X, Y, and Z, we'll, we'll um, do research on that. When are they using uh, social media and what platforms are they on? But again, I want to hammer home. If, you're, if, if you make your posts good, people will see them. And if you're, you're consistent and you're not boring and you're not acting like a company and you're acting like a person, uh, people people will pay attention to them. You can't make anything viral, but you can make something good. And I think it's really important that you work on making things good and not try to worry about getting as many likes and shares as possible. Although that doesn't hurt, I wouldn't focus so much on and worry too much about that end result. Just, just keep putting out good stuff and the rest will follow. All right, we are 27 minutes in and I wanna just check uh, no new questions right now. Um, when should I be posting? So here's the lens method. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the lens method. We, we came up with this acronym and developed it in 2016. And we have been teaching it to hundreds of business owners over the last four years to develop comfort, quality, and engagement with the right audience. So this is what you're here for. This is what is this acronym you're talking about, L-E-N-S. Um, and answering those questions for you as to what types of content and how much of each content should I be posting to, to my social networks. Obviously it's an acronym. So there's an L, an E, an N, and an S. The L stands for listening. This is the first type of post. If you're taking notes, great. How's the time to write L stands for listening? What are listening posts? Listening posts are posts where you're actually soliciting your audience to get a response from them and stay engaged through the process. Something that's going to be fun, something that's going to get the readers interested, engaged, um, activate them. These are your posts that would say, typically might at one time might have said, like this post or share this post or comment below, right? You have to be more creative than saying those words these days. Facebook doesn't like those words. So maybe you just start a list like this, this pastry, uh, this, this Facebook page Innocent did, and they started list, listing movies um, with pastries, like replacing the, the title, like Titanic, uh, Pie Hard, uh, Brave Tart, right? So they started with these, these comical uh renaming of movies to include uh, pastries and over a thousand people liked the post and there were 207 comments and 99 shares where people want to see what their friends might might say but they don't say 
like, comment, or share, they're just telling, they're just starting the list and then people just kind of, it took off. It was great, great content. That's an example, that's one example. Here's another example. Uh, maybe it's a guessing game, a contest, a poll, or telling somebody to react with an emoji, but how unique is your pet's name? This is a, a veterinarian. Comment below, obviously, I just got done saying don't, don't necessarily say comment. You could always say, tell us below, or um, you know, show us your best example, or, or tell, us, tell us the name. These people said, uh, send in your, your, your pet's name, and we'll tell you later how many patients have the same name. Uh, so, you know, catchy image, hello, my name is, and that, that, that makes you read the lines above it. And then in the comments, you could see how many uh, there was. I don't have that here on the screenshot, how many comments it was. Um, and I think I have one more example. So this was another veterinarian. And the, the note here I have here, listening posts are the most engaging. Great posts. These are great posts to boost. If you want to boost a post, we're not going to talk too much about Facebook advertising today or boosting posts. Um, but these are the great posts to boost. There's good reason why, uh, but you, you definitely want to get engagement. And you should be using these posts 25 to 40% of, of the time that you're, you're posting. But here's another one. Guess which staff member has their birthday today? It might be hard for you guys to see this. Um, uh, we, will reveal the late, we will reveal the answer later this afternoon. So here's a, a veterinarian that, that's posting a picture of one of their employees as a child. Uh, or staff members and uh, of them as a child and asking them to identify who that is. And um, so that that's another. So you get the point. Listening post, you're, you're actually trying to solicit a response from people. You're trying to get them to like or react, uh, comment, share, engage with you. Um, and those are listening posts and they're very powerful and they will help you grow your audience. Uh, later on, you could take people that engaged with your posts and you could build an audience for a Facebook ad to them. But again, I don't want to go down that road. Maybe we'll do another webinar on Facebook advertising and the difference between boosting and and advertising. Um, I'd be happy to do that. I actually have material that that I could do a webinar on that at some, some future point. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, yeah, definitely try to get reactions from people uh, and it, it can really help grow your audience. Basically this, if your content isn't driving conversation, you're doing it wrong. So you should always try to be driving uh, conversation with everything you post. Uh, listening posts, especially. I mean, all of them are, are great, but listening posts is where we focus on that. The E in Lens stands for educating. And this, these types of posts, you've seen them. Um, let me check for questions. Okay. These types of posts, let's see if I can move my, see if I can turn my camera off for a quick second. That didn't work. Okay. So uh, I think you guys can see the bottom left, but the educating posts are posts that explain to your audience certain things about your industry, certain things about your business, certain things that relate to your business but aren't about your particular company. Um, and just interesting facts. So we have the DYK. Have you ever seen DYK? It stands for Did You Know? Uh, it's an acronym that, that people will, will use or, uh, on social media. They'll just say DYK, kind of like LOL is laughing out loud. DYK, tell, something, tell someone something interesting related to your industry but not about why they should buy from you yet. You know, just talk about your industry. Don't say, oh, and by the way, this is on sale now for 25% off. Like don't, just, just tell somebody something interesting. Um, facts, could be facts about your industry. Facts about um, your, it could be facts about a product or service that you offer. Um, telling people facts are, are maybe facts that are related to your industry, but aren't your industry. Uh, we're going to go into that in, a, in a, about two seconds also, but facts are, are another thing that you can post and they're good for educating your clients. Statistics are awesome. Um, find data and statistics of interest to your audience. 
again, even if it doesn't have to do with your product or service, you could just put up some interesting statistics. You could probably put, well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend coronavirus statistics right now, but, but you could put up uh, statistics of something not related to your industry uh, that are just cool or unique. Um, and it's good. Remember, people, people want to read. You want to keep people engaged uh, with your content. And then the other ones you'll see sometimes are the TBTs and the FBFs, other acronyms, Throwback Thursday, Flashback Friday. Uh, maybe maybe post an old photo of you or your what your business looked like. I know that um, in our Monday Networking Gurus uh, group, uh, Andy McAfee from the Art Shop, uh, he when he does his presentations, he has some old pictures of what the art shop looked like back in like the 1920s or 30s. And I always think that's really cool. Those are great TBT, Throwback Thursday posts uh, or Flashback Friday posts. And you can use that hashtag, hashtag TBT, hashtag FBF. Uh, they're great for educating your customers without, you know, that just talking about your you all the time. One of the ways that we help clients come up with educating educational type posts is we use this thing called the hub spoke topic map. And basically what it is, is it says, take your industry, um, take the industry you're in, put it in a circle in the middle and then draw some lines to it and around it, put things that are related to your industry, but not your company. So let's say we have an auto repair company. And anyone can do this um, in your industry. Take an auto repair company, and then what are some things that we can talk about on social media that are not just all about us and why people should buy from us? So for an auto repair company, it might be vehicle safety information, how-to videos or articles on car maintenance, uh, planning a road trip, different road trips, uh, car buying tips, fun road trip destinations. And you can find all this content online and just share it. Uh, so think about things that are related to your industry, but aren't necessarily about you, but it has to do uh, with, um, with your industry. Scott, I see a question about what about hashtag DYK? I, I guess, do you mean, can you use the hashtag DYK? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I, I've, I'm pretty sure that, that there's probably, if you did a search on how many people use hashtag DYK, you'd probably find a lot. Or, yeah, it's it could definitely be a hashtag. Um, and, and really cool, if you wanted to search Instagram or Facebook, Search the hashtag and you probably learn a whole bunch of new stuff in one day. Just hash, hashtag DYK and see what everybody around the web and around the world is using that hashtag with. So um, originally, you guys know that right now we should be in a room together um, and doing this live. And one of the things I had planned for is this next slide. Um, and I was going to say it's your turn. Um, <laughs> I had a, a blank circle to write your, write your industry in and then do some things on the outside. So Pauline's saying, what about, what about trash in this hub? I'm outside sales. And then she said, oh, perfect. Maybe this, maybe this helps. Um, you could, you could do it yourself and I'd be happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Um, I will try to make sure I get everybody these slides so that they have a, um, especially this one, so that they could do it. Obviously, I was trying to make this interactive. Um, I'm not going to take a break right now so everybody could do this uh, or ask uh, lots of questions about it. But yes, I want you to be able to, you can take a piece of paper out. I, I, I was sitting with a, a customer, uh, a friend of mine recently. And I just, we were talking about her business and I just took out a piece of paper and I drew that circle. And then I was like, what are some things we could talk about? You know, let's say you do um, travel, travel agent. You might want to talk about right now, why right now is not the best time to travel. Um, no, but vacation spots, hot spots, deals, um, uh, maybe um, tips for going to certain places, uh, resources on finding the best rates. You know, th there's lots of, Lots of things that you could do uh, for each industry. Um, so think about it. Get creative. Uh, I don't think there's a real wrong answer. We're just trying to get you to 
to educate your audience on things or give them other content that isn't all about you. These days, people want to learn before they buy, be educated instead of pitched. So we're on a webinar. Um, I know you guys are going to want to learn stuff and, and be educated about this so you wouldn't be here. Um, and in your business, your prospects and customers, they want to learn before they buy things. They want to be educated. And that's that sales cycle could be 30 seconds. It could be 30 days. Um, it could be 30 months. You know, it all depends on the industry. I mean, B2B typically has a longer sales cycle. Um, and and like a, a, a pack of gum has a very short cycle. Uh, but, you know, that people definitely want to learn. That's why YouTube is the second largest social uh, search engine. Um, give give people value. Teach them. Show them things. And and then stay in front of them and stay visible. And they'll they'll come to you when they have questions. And then hopefully when they want to, uh, you know, become a customer. The N in networking or the N in lens is for networking. It's the the N in our acronym. And let's see. Um, I'm just going to scroll down here real quick, look in Lisa Allen as a business development rep for staffing. I mainly call them business owners, operation managers, HR professionals, or would you recommend uh, in addition to LinkedIn? Um, that's a great question. So the question was, as a business development rep for a staffing company, I mainly call on business owners, operations managers, and HR professionals. Where would you recommend I be in addition to LinkedIn? My suggestion would be to also uh, reach out on Facebook. You can actually target ads directly to small business owners, operations managers, and HR professionals as a job title. Uh, you can run ads, you can boost posts to them, uh, and you can stay in touch with them. Also, you may want to look at Twitter uh, because you can tag some of the, maybe some of the clients uh, or, or people looking to fill positions. Um, uh, I'm, you know, and, and those would be the first three I would look at, but definitely you can expand beyond LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is definitely number one. Um, Facebook would be number two, but maybe, I mean, you could look at YouTube and say, you know, here's some things uh, to look at um, for, you know, if you're in a staffing company, I'd be happy to talk to you after the webinar. Uh, obviously I, I we can't go through your strategy on here, but I hope that helps. And um, definitely reach reach out afterwards and I'll be happy to kind of go over some different social networks with you. And that offer stands for everyone. I'd be happy to kind of go through and help you figure out what networks you should be on. Um, as, uh, yeah. So and in networking, this is this is my favorite, um, probably my favorite type of post. Uh, of course, the listening posts are really fun and the educating ones are really cool because you learn new things. Networking, I call these the goodwill posts. Um, networking posts are the types of posts, and you see them. Obviously, that they're they're uh, when you tag someone else, and if you, you know if you put the little at symbol, you can tag people on, especially Facebook and Instagram. Um, tagging tagging others ex expands your audience to their audience, so. Uh, I might tag the Guilford Merchants Association in a post, and if they have it set that, that that would show up on their page or their their feed, then people that are searching or might might be followers of them may see my post because I tagged them. It's it's goodwill. We're sharing each other's things. Using hashtags. I would say use a lot of hashtags, especially on Instagram or Twitter. Twitter is built for hashtags. But hashtags are really good because it makes things searchable. You could search hashtag SMB for small business. You could search hashtag digital marketing for digital marketing things. You could hashtag vacation, hashtag family, hashtag cute puppies, hashtag kittens, you know, and you could see, uh, you know, a, a list. It's kind of like a search. It's kind of like doing a search. Uh, and if you have hashtags that are, are being used but not being overused. You know, here's the thing. If somebody's used the hashtag a million times, your post will probably get lost if somebody's searching for what's been in that hashtag. But if 
if somebody uses a hashtag that only has maybe like 500 or a thousand uses and somebody's searching for it, your, your post is likely to be seen. Um, so you don't want to be lost and buried in the sea. Great question, Kathy. Where can I get a list of popular hashtags? Is there a way to get a list specific to my industry? Yes, there is. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. I can help you after the webinar. It's, there's a Google search. But one of the things that we're going to talk about at the end is I, can, I have a tool that I'm going to offer you for free that you can actually see uh, different hashtags. So we're going to come back to that question um, at the end. Great question, too. And, and Scott, you, you'll get it answered. I'll answer it before the end of the webinar, um, or at least one, one way that, that you can do it. Um, share community events, even if your company isn't involved. Let's say there's a, a cancer walk or an MS walk, or maybe it's a, a day in the park, or maybe GMA is doing a, a big event, or you know, obviously we didn't have the first couple rounds of the NCAA tournament this year, but your business could have been posting about that. Community events, even if you're not involved, talk about the events that are going on in your community, especially if you are involved, if your company is a uh, involved and tag others. Um, that's another way to, to have goodwill and, and expand your audience. Like, comment, and engage on colleagues and customers' posts. Be friends with your customers. Um, unless you're posting crazy stuff about your personal life, don't be afraid to be friends with your customers. Uh, some people may may not want to do that. My suggestion is not a, not a bad idea. Um, but definitely colleagues, other businesses that you work with, work work together with, be following them on, on social media. Like and comment and, and engage with them on their things. And you can even do it as your own page now too. It doesn't have to be personal. I can like, I can like posts as JVI Mobile Marketing instead of just me, JVix. Um, so th really the two most important rules here, don't forget to tag others. And don't forget to use hashtags. Networking posts will expand your network faster than anything else on social media. Can you only use hashtags on Twitter? It's totally not a dumb question. Uh, Twitter was built, that was the original, like that's the OG network of hashtag use. Um, but Lisa, you can use hashtags on Facebook, you can use hashtags on Instagram, Snapchat, you can use hashtags pretty much on any network these days. Some use them more prominently than others, Instagram and Twitter being the, the big two, but Facebook, definitely you can search uh, hashtags on Facebook as well now. Uh, so it's not a dumb question at all. It's, it's actually, uh, I'm glad you asked, but yes, Instagram and Twitter are going to be your big two. And last in your Goodwill networking posts, oh, never mind. I just went through like comment. That's it. So that, that's it for those. And then we'll hammer it home. Word of mouth can be as important, if not more important for neighborhood businesses as traditional advertising. So traditional advertising being your billboards, TV, radio, newspaper, or magazine. Um, not to say that that traditional advertising isn't effective because we know it is or it wouldn't have been around for so long. Um, digital is more fluid, but word of mouth is huge if you're in the local space and you want to grow your business to the local space. Um, if, if, you, if your customers are typically local, uh, that word of mouth is huge uh, for a neighborhood business. And it's typically much cheaper. <laughs> so, all right. Dum, da, dum, dum. Selling is the S in the lens method. So selling, obviously people are saying, well, when can I talk about myself? When can I talk about my products? Nobody's really asking that question because you're all probably doing it too much. Um, we all do it. We're all, we all find ourselves guilty of, I got to figure out the way to sell. So let's start putting out posts about, let's do 25% off this week only. We got to drive traffic. We got to drive people. You're driving traffic away is what you're doing. Here's, here's what we do as business owners with our selling posts. This is what most of us are doing, is what this girl is saying. So for our first date, I was thinking we could um, figure out names for our children, right? Creepy. All right, so, um, but we do this. We all do this. I'm, I'm, I raise my, I'm guilty of it. Um, we are, we are basically 
going out to a cold audience, people who have never heard about us or never, you know, who, who haven't learned anything or haven't been educated. And we're just saying, hey, this is why you should buy my product, stranger. Um, and Or you should buy my product right now. Or, hey, I'll give you 50% off of my product that you've never heard of and I've never talked to you. Why don't we look at it in terms of, so our, for our first date, I was thinking we could um, go for coffee. Let's talk. Let's get to know each other. Let's build a relationship. Marketing is very relational. So I hope this slide brings you some humor. I hope nobody knows who the girl is in this photo. I don't have a clue. I just found this on the internet. Um, but, uh, but yes, um, we shouldn't be doing that. Now, is there a need? To, to do the coupons, the offers, and discount? Is there a need to talk about your products and services? Is there a need to talk about why you're the best or better than your competition? Is there a need to ask people to order now and join your list, which are all types of selling posts? Yes, definitely, definitely. But too many of us do it way too often. We probably do it more than, actually I have a poll down below. If you guys saw the poll, at the bottom of your screen, looks like I've only had three out of 32 do these polls because you probably didn't notice they were down there, but there's polls at the bottom. And uh, obviously one was about COVID-19 that's going around. Um, but the second one are more than 50% of your current posts, sales posts, all about you and your products and services. So far I've had 100% off of five people say, know that that not more than 50% of your posts are sales posts. And that's awesome. Totally an unexpected answer. But I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that the people that are saying that 50% of their current posts are not sales posts or more than 50%. Um, you guys are re either really awesome at this whole social media selling uh, concept, or you're not telling me the truth, or you're afraid to answer yes. Um, but anyway, good. The people are hope people are noticing the polls at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, we'll come back to the polls at the end. I just want to tell people that they were there. Uh, so I'm going to move forward one slide. Um, oh, Scott, most of us have been to other DMI events. We're told this every time. Awesome, great. That's huge. Good. So I'm kind of coming in reinforcing right now, and I love that. Good. 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 So again, we need to think about content marketing like a first date. If you only talk about yourself, there probably won't be a second one, right? So that's that's good. I'm so glad that that people are answering uh, that people are answering no. And for the one person who typed yes, that more than 50% are, I thank you and applaud you for your honesty. I have no idea who you are, but it's okay. Um, we don't need to we don't need to call you out, but you are being uh, very, very, uh, very truthful and brave, I guess. I, I, I'm just kidding. You're, you're fine. Um, I do it. I mean, I don't think 50% of mine are, are about me anymore. I've, I really try to stick to the lens method that I teach. Um, so I try to keep it to the, the, the appropriate level, which I'm going to get to right now. Here's, here's my suggestion. Again, this is a suggestion. The, the listening, educating, and networking, the L, the E, and the N posts should make up 80% of all of the social media content you're putting out there. A suggestion would be 30% listening, 25 educating, 25 networking. Your business, it might be 40 educating, um, you know, and 20 and 20 and 20 uh, for the other three. Um, I don't care how you really break out the pie. The most important slice is that bottom slice in black that says selling 20%. I really suggest, strongly suggest, that when you're talking about your products and services and why people should buy from you, that you really, really do your best to try to keep it to just 20%. One out of five, two out of 10 um, of your posts should be on why people should buy from you. Here's the thing, people don't wanna, if, if the only thing you're ever posting about is your products and services, it's gonna turn people away, it's gonna bore people. People, people wanna, they want to be educated, um, they wanna be engaged with you as a company, um, they, they would love to see where you're at in the, in the community and what you're doing and, and who else you're working with and, and find out about you from other, other people. So you wanna make sure you can keep people engaged. And if you're selling, 
uh, posts make up more than 50% or 60% or more uh, of, of your social media activity, um, people won't stay engaged. They just, they, they'll either unfollow you or just ignore it or just keep scrolling. So uh, let's go down and just make sure. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much. Um, and let's keep moving along. How to save time with automation. This is a question I get all the, and that's not so much a question. This is a complaint, a fear. Uh, people, people tell me all the time, I just don't have time to sit down and make all these social posts. Like people that are, that are going to post four times a day on social media, like I wonder how they're running a business because they, they, you know, it would take me all day. I just sit there at my computer. I can't do that. I wear so many hats in my business, blah, 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 blah. Does this sound like most of you? Um, you know, we need to come out, come up with a way to save time and automate these posts so that you don't have to sit in front of the computer every day for three or four hours a day coming up with social media content. So what if you created and scheduled your posts in advance? You don't need any special tools to do this um, on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. Pretty sure you can even... Um, I'm pretty sure you can schedule posts on Instagram, um, but uh, you, you, all the platforms have a way where you can actually create a draft or schedule a post to go out at a, at a later time. Um, it's usually hidden and buried in the network. Usually they're, they're trying to push you to get your posts out right away. Um, but creating and scheduling your posts in advance is just one time saving way. You might be able to create all your posts on Sunday afternoon um, and have them scheduled for the next week or two weeks. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some tools. So monitoring messages, comments, and responses. You know, you should be able to have a tool that can let you know when you have somebody that messaged you or talked about you on Facebook or or uh, Google or get a new review or um, anybody who mentions you. Um, and there are plenty of tools available to do this. Uh, two of the big ones, Mention is a, is a good tool if you um, wanna, wanna know when, when people are mentioning a certain term, like the name of your business, or a certain, certain thing in your area that you wanna stay focused on, or a certain type of product that you wanna stay focused on. That's a great one. Hootsuite is a social media automation and scheduling tool. It can be very expensive um to to use but you can put load up a couple of your social media platforms and schedule out your posts and and monitor uh the your wall and your threads and what people are talking about um it's it can be it can be pricey um but it is out there and they're probably the the leader uh in that space um let me go back on that that slide real quick because i've I wanted to, to also say that uh, more about that creating and scheduling your posts in advance. Um, oh, Amanda, yep. Yeah, okay, so HubSpot can, a lot of other tools now, you're right, have have ways that you can create and schedule your posts in advance or, or at least listen, listen to what other people are saying. So these aren't the only ones and this is not a, an exhaustive resource. I wanna, I wanna point that out. And I'm gonna talk about one here in just a few minutes, so. All right. Creating eye-catching images without Photoshop. A lot of you are going to know the suggestions I have here. Um, but listen, guys, we don't need to be graphic designers anymore. Um, you can still hire one. I still think it's a good idea to have a graphic designer that you can work with to help you with image edits. But for 90% of what you're going to be doing on social media, you just don't, you just don't need it. There are so many free and paid tools you can use. A lot of them are what's called drag and drop. So you can like take an element and just click on it. Kind of like if you've ever done, made a PowerPoint presentation, how you can just kind of click on an element and move it around the screen and, and drop it where you want it to go. No skills required. Uh, some of them, the ones that, that we've used in the past uh, are Canva, Stencil. Uh, one really cool one is called Relay That. I know Heather uses it all the time for JVI Mobile. Relay that will take an image and give you suggestions of other so other sizes for social media. I'm going to put a link also 
a question I get about this, um, uh, a question I always get is, how do I know what size is right for a Facebook ad or a Facebook cover image or a Facebook post versus an Instagram post? Or I put this thing on Facebook and Instagram, but on Instagram it cut off half the half of my head or cut off my ear or cut off the, the words that I was using. So I've just launched a website recently. We're still working on it. It's, it's far, far from done as a resource for small business owners who want to learn digital marketing. And it's called how to dot agency. And I put a social media uh, image size guide up on this website. I just put a link in the chat. Um, it is how to dot agency forward slash blah, 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 social media image size guide. You guys use that as a resource. It'll tell you what size an image should be on Pinterest or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat, what size video, what size your profile image should be. So really helpful tool. I borrowed it from another website. I gave them, I gave them their attribution, but I wanted you guys to be able to use it and also uh, see this new website that, that my agency is working on called howto.agency. Um, so know your image size, and sometimes these change. This is the most current one that I was able to find for 2020, um, but these have changed over the years. Um, a lot of them don't change, but some will, and it's good to know the sizes of the images. Um, but there are so many free tools that can help you, free or low cost tools that can help you create really nice images for social media. Um, th there's also stock image sites that you can use. Some are free, but I prefer to spend a little bit of money on good stock images and not make everything look cheesy and look like everything else. Um, so I hope I hope that helps you with graphic design. A lot of people say, oh, I can't I can't make an image. I don't have any design skills. You don't need them now. You really don't. And the next section, how to find an endless supply of great content. Because the question that I get all the time is, I don't really know what to post about. I mean, all I can post about is things about my company. Well, hopefully going through the 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 L, the E, the N. Um, listening, educating, and networking has helped trigger trigger some some uh, ideas for what types of content you can post. Hopefully, the hub and, and spoke will help you uh, really have a, a, a get a sense of some other things you can be talking about on social media. Though that's huge, um, but you know you're going to run out of things, and sometimes you're just going to want something that you can post, maybe it's just filler content, maybe it's just, just something else. There are places you can find to curate new content. Go to YouTube, uh, find videos on YouTube. Go to Google, search Google, find latest news articles. If you go to a website called BuzzSumo, you can find articles and see actually how viral they were, how many times they were shared and and um, you know how, how, uh, how popular that content was. Go to Go to other people that you follow in the industry and share or repost their content on your page. Um, there's no no shame in sharing or no shame in reposting things, especially if they're of interest to your audience. The latest news, topics of the day. Um, obviously, from a business standpoint, you may want to stay away from strong opinions, uh, but if you can talk about topics or put out relevant information, I, so many of my customers the last week I can't tell you how many customers uh, and clients I've had to actually update their website or update or post that something on social media or text, send out a text message to their followers, which is a service we offer. Um, just giving them updates on this COVID-19. Um, so, you know, news of the day, things that'll be relevant to your audience. And then Reddit, if you guys haven't used Reddit, Reddit is a, that is a source of information. Um, not all of it's real. It's a big discussion board. Some of it is, you know, it's very opinionated, but there are articles and things and you can learn a lot of things on Reddit, probably some things that you'll wish you could unsee. <laughs> um, but but there there is a lot on Reddit. It's a, it's a very big source for, for information. Uh, let me go down and look at and here. Questions. Okay, good. Um, so those are some places you can go if you want to find other things to post to your social media. Um, but what if there was a tool, everybody's going, uh-oh, here it comes. 
What if there was a tool that could find and curate, create viral content, content that's that's being shared, create, um, uh, create design. Let me go back on Reddit real quick. Scott, yes, it it, is, it could be a source of misinformation. Um, don't see it as trustworthy. You, you got to use your best judgment. Um, look at the source. Try to find the source. I wouldn't just share everything. Um, it could just be like a funny video that might relate to your industry. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go to Reddit and say, let me find all the, the most accurate news to share with Reddit. It might just be more for entertainment content that you can do. So I hope I hope that helps. I want to, want to go back on that real quick. Um, find and curate great viral content. Create and design great posts with images and schedule and automate your posts and monitor mentions all in one tool. So you don't have to go to YouTube, BuzzSumo, Canva, Hootsuite, all, all these different tools and all these different websites because that's that's going to take up more time than it than it might be worth, right? Um, you know, I don't think I really would have solved your problem today if, if I told you you had to go to all those tools. Well, a couple of years ago, we put out our own tool called MySoPro. I'm going to put a link to it. It's free. Uh, it's, it's actually called freemium. I'm going to get to that in a minute, what freemium means. If you don't know. But let me put a link to it. Because a lot of people are going to want to type www, and it's not www. It's social.mysofro.com. You can register a free account. It's the last social media tool I hope you'll ever need. Um, we have been using it in our business and for our clients' businesses for years. Uh, one of the things that we don't do as an agency, we, we, don't, um, uh, we don't take on clients that need us to do all of their content scheduling and posting. It's not what we do as an agency. Uh, I have done that in the past for some clients and we've moved away from that. So we just recommend that you use MySoPro um, for part of your social media posting strategy. Uh, and I want to, whoops, I didn't want to get to questions yet. I want to show you real quick. Bear with me. Just log in. I'm going to share that screen and hope that my audio stays good while I do. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's try to share my screen and share a tab. All right, I am hoping that everyone can see the MySoPro tab that says, Welcome, Jay. If you can, just type yes in the chat for me real quick, just so I know that everybody can see my screen. And if you can't see it, no. Okay, Amanda says no. All right. It's little, how to enlarge it. Okay, hold on a second. Let me see if I can fix that for you. Did that get better? Is it bigger? No, okay. All right. Uh, I can't make it, the, I was trying to make it the main screen. Um, it, it won't let me. Um, what if you, guys, if you guys minimize your chat on the right-hand side, maybe it's, oh, 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 I'm sorry. It is down bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good suggestion. Okay. Good. All right, cool. All right, so you guys can see it. Hopefully it's clear now. Um, all right, and I'll make it a little smaller now for me. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks everybody. Okay, so now this is the, this is the dashboard for MySoPro. This is our social media automation tool and software. It is free to connect unlimited social media account. Um, right now, we uh, only have the ability to add Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. There is a way to connect Instagram, Snapchat, and WhatsApp, which we're not even talking about today, um, through a, an integration with, with Telegram. Um, Right now, my team is in London and they're working on creating a direct posting and scheduling um, and an automating 
uh, Instagram tool so that you don't have to use uh, Telegram. So Instagram, if you're posting a lot to Instagram, it's it's really not ideal. This my SoPro is not really ideal yet. Um, it will be. Uh, it's just not not ready for prime time yet. But if you've Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter, and let's say you manage four Facebook pages, uh, a LinkedIn personal profile plus a company page, maybe you have um, 13 Pinterest boards and one Twitter account, right? I know that's a lot. I, I've got times times each of those by about nine, um, and and I'll you tell you welcome to my world. But yeah, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, here's the neat thing about my Sopra. You can connect unlimited pages, profiles, um, accounts right within your MySoPro platform and still use the platform completely free forever. Okay, so where Hootsuite, you're limited to, I don't know, like three profiles for $9.99 a month or something, and then you you, you don't have a built-in image editor, you don't have a, 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 a way to find new content, um, you, you have all that in here for free. Um, so I'd hope you guys uh, will use it. I'm just gonna show you how simple it is to create a post, okay, new post. Come on. Taking way longer than usual, of course, because I'm on a webinar and I'm sharing my screen, but here we go. All right, so what you see when you wanna to go to do a post is let's say I'm gonna pick JVI Mobile Marketing Twitter, the JVI Mobile Marketing page on Facebook, really important items for small business board on Pinterest, and also maybe about our services on Pinterest. And I wanna share it on the 30 day social media challenge group. And let's say we wanna share it on, I think that's, that's oh, the digital marketing assistant group, right? So I want this post that I'm gonna to create to go out to all these platforms. Um, and I wanna do it all from one place. So I wanna say this, is my post and do I want to put a link uh, yeah Pinterest link URL where do I want to send the people that that are on Pinterest uh, I want to send them to how to dot agency I'm not really gonna post this so it doesn't really matter what I put there but I can have this content get posted uh, automatically have the link to Pinterest when people click on that pin uh, I can I can stick an emoji in here um, it's not going to give you a full walkthrough of the software today because it is, like I said, free to get set up and use. Um, and I can put a link to a website that I have attached to my page. And here, here, real quick, I want to see this hashtag over here. So let's go back to the question. Um, let's go back to the questions from uh, Lisa. Um, Kathy Scott with the hashtags, Kathy Haynes, Scott Elkins. Let me let me go back to your question here in my SoPro. If I click on hashtag up here when I'm creating a post, I can search hashtags right here. Let's say I want to search um, uh, puppies. What's going to happen? Is it's going to give me, and it's only being slow because I'm on a webinar and I'm trying to show you my software. It's very quick usually. <sighs> There's an error with my search. Watch our puppy. Shouldn't be an error. All right, so something's not working here. Works fine every minute of every day except for when I want to try to connect it to a webinar page. All right, so I'm just gonna tell you what this will do. And when you guys try it yourself, if you have any issues, just let me know. When you put in a hashtag, there's gonna be a little dot next to the hashtag. If the dot is green, you can use the hashtag to get seen now. If it, the dot is blue, use this to get seen over time. And if it's red, it's likely to get lost in the crowd. And if it's gray, my software will tell you don't use this hashtag very few people are following it so you're not going to be found for this this hashtag so it does give you um suggestions on whether to use the hashtag or not um 
I'm a little bummed that it's not uh, coming up right now, digital. All right, one more time, marketing. Now, usually it comes up really quick, but it's not today. So, or not right now on the webinar. It could be because I'm trying to share my screen. Um, but that's a good way to search hashtags. It is right from within here as well. Now, one last thing I'm gonna show you, uh, or there's two, but image creator. Remember I was talking about Canva and Stencil and those, those ways to create images. So on this post, this is my post, smileyfacejvimobile.com, my Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook post. I click open image creator and I can choose a template and let's just say I want a template that'll work for Facebook um, and Twitter. Let's do landscape. Um, let's do a, it gives you the suggested sizes and templates, but let's say I just want to use a blank one. All right, I'm going to use this blank one. And now here comes my image creator. I can swap the background image. I can add new images, stickers, shapes. Let's say I want to put a sticker in. Um, I'm just going to make something up real quick. Let's use this guitar. Add this. Okay, so now I got a guitar. I'm going to put it make it smaller and put it up in the corner, All right? And then I'm gonna add a logo. I'm gonna pick one of my howto.agency logos, put that in, I'm gonna drag it to the bottom. I'm gonna click use save image. I could add text, I could add emojis, I could go through a whole walkthrough on how to build images in here, opacity, move things to the front, the back. Um, but obviously we don't have time for for that, now I have the ability to use this image now, save it for later, or use and save it, or just download your my image. I'm gonna use and save. I'm gonna call it test, use and save. I don't know if you guys can see the pop-up boxes for use and save, but it's, that's what's popping up, prompting me what to save. And then once I click use it, you can see that I have that image populates in. So when I make this post, this is going to be the text above the image. This is going to be the image it uses. And now I can choose a date and time. So I'm going to say, I want this to go out uh, Thursday at 9.40 a.m. And I'm going to confirm. I'm not going to confirm it. But if I click confirm, I can go back to work and know that I've just scheduled and automated some of my social media. So think about it this way. You could come in on a Sunday or a Monday or a slow day or a night, one night after work, and you could go and make um, 30, 40, 50 posts um, uh, at a time, post your next two, three, four months, schedule out all that content, and, uh, and just be done. Just know that your content's going to be going out there. So I'm going to answer some questions about this. That's great. Thank you. Do you need to use a hashtag before the word you're searching? Uh, no, you can just search the word. Um, I'm not really sure why that wasn't working on the webinar, Kathy, but can you add your own templates or elements such as your logo to the library so that you can use it again and again? Absolutely. That's that's what I did with the howto.agency. I, I clicked upload logo and all the logos were in there already. Um, and then you could schedule it. So you could just schedule it and then make another post and another post. I'm gonna show you one last thing in this software. Um, you can also uh, see the calendar then, show everything that you've, you've scheduled. Right now I don't have anything scheduled. We just ran a whole bunch of posts for this webinar. So we gotta fill up our calendar again. Um, and, but you can see March, 2020, see some, some posts. Here's to go directly to the image creator to just build an image that maybe you don't need with a post right now. Uh, I didn't want to click on that, but let's <clears throat> get back out of there. All right. Uh, this is the last thing I want to show you um, is message research. There's also social streams where you could load your Facebook profile and wall and see things. There's a statistics built in. You could see how many people liked and shared and engaged with your content. That's all built in. Um, and then, but message research, this is kind of the Buzz Sumo YouTube, Google part. I can search YouTube, Google News, or any RSS blog feeds and alerts. But let's just say I want 
funny chat. Let's do this. I have a, a client that's a bowling center, a bowling alley. They don't call them alleys anymore, by the way. It's a bowling center. Alleys are dark places where people get mugged. So people, bowling centers are, are family, family fun centers now. But anyway, funny bowling tales. All right. And search YouTube. Hopefully this will work on the webinar. Seems like trying to share my screen and doing this is creating a conflict with, with my SOPRA today. Yeah, striking out here, guys, on this one with the with the share on the screen. If you guys create a, a MySoPro account, you will not have the, the issue. But what this is doing is it's going to search YouTube for those keywords, funny bowling fails, and come up with some, some you know, videos that uh, were either embarrassing to somebody or, you know, just silly, silly videos. And you can actually click a little calendar icon that would come up over here. Yeah and schedule that post um, for, oh, here we go. Here we go, it came up. Bowling Fails Compilation, posted Tuesday, the 27th of January of 2015. It had 2,508,801 views. It had 9,677 likes, 803 dislikes, 1,467 comments. The point of this is, People looked at it. People engaged, interacted with it. I mean, it's overwhelming. It's 10 times the amount of likes to dislikes. You could watch it right, right from in here. So you can make sure that it's good content for your page. Not that bowling fails would be necessarily relevant for your page, but you could search whatever you want up here. But then I just click this calendar and it'll open up my creator and put that video into my creator. And I could schedule this to post to my page tomorrow at noon if I wanted to. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna come back over to the webinar screen. Um, Lisa, thank you, you're too nice. Um, all right, cool. So you can actually then schedule out your posts. And I think as far as showing this, then I have some social training and tips, but you guys, it's, just go in and play with it. Here's, here's where it would ever cost you money. If you need to create a lot of images or do a lot of message research, um, in a month, uh, there is it's guys. It's twenty four ninety five a month. So, and you could you could get two, uh, it's like two months free if you buy it for a year. I'm not selling it to you. To, I want you to use this tool for free for the rest of your lives if that's what works for you. Um, I just want to let you know there is a premium version of it that that gives you a little more flexibility and use out of it. Um, and and you because you guys would see that you get two weeks of the pro version to when you get started, but you don't need to put any credit card in. And after your two weeks, it just reverts you to the basic version if you don't upgrade. It's it's totally, totally fine. I have I have hundreds of customers using the free version of this and I'm totally content with that. So sign up, get a free account, and let me stop sharing that window and get back over into our webinar window. Oh hey, look it's me. Um, all right. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to take time to answer questions, but I just want to tell you guys one last little bit of information. Um, I know right now uh, we're in a tough time, right? Everybody's struggling. Everybody's worried. What's next? A lot of us are working from home for the first time ever. Uh, may not be used to it, may not have a schedule, might be struggling with it. Um, I, I, I've been working from home for years. I'm, I'm happy doing it, but I'm also happy to help you guys. If you guys just have questions, um, some of the things that we offer are listed here, uh, pay-per-click ads, logo design. We've done tons of logo designs. I've got three in the hopper right now. Chatbot marketing. If you wanted to put an automated chatbot or customer service uh, automated bot on your Facebook page uh, or on your website, we build those. We can help you with email copy. SEO, reputation, online review generation, uh, getting, making sure your information is correct on all the online directories. If you want to send out text messages to your, your opt-in subscribers and clients, like we can help you with all of that. Um, right now, I'd, I'd much rather help you and give you guidance and help set you up with the tools and the software you need at, at really at, at 
at no or, or whatever my cost is for the time being, um, because you guys may need help communicating with people right now. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, if you, if you want to have that conversation, I'm going to put a link right here. Um, again, no obligation. We'll, we'll come and go as friends and, and networking partners when this is all done. I love to network. Sharon Smith from GMA will tell you that I love to just talk and do one-to-ones and network with people. So name slash JBI mobile. Um, I probably should have put the HTTP in there. If you guys go copy and paste that though, you can book a time. I'll be happy to get on a, a call with you or a webinar and, and answer any questions, digital marketing related, strategy related questions um, that you might have. So it's a special offer for this group. Normally I would charge about 250 bucks for it, but we're not in normal times right now. I mean, we're definitely not in normal times right now. Look. Um, so anyway, that being said, there's a few other ways to get in touch with us. Like I said, we're in McLeansville, just northeast of Greensboro. Facebook page is JVI Mobile. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all at JVI Mobile. Um, got a 1-800 number, but I'm happy to put my cell in here. But like I said, I'd rather you just you know book me if you want to talk. So I don't want to spend time on that part of it. Um, I want to go back two slides to right here. And does anyone have any questions in the bottom part of this um, uh, section uh, un under your under the my slide screen? You should see a section for questions. Um, I'm going to mark some of these as answered. Um, again, Lisa, thank you so much for this wonderful information. You're very engaging, communicate very well. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things I want to do this year is speak and educate and teach a lot more. So if you guys have a civic group or who said these, oh, Jay, Jay is my name. Sorry. Did I not say that my name was Jay? Oof, that's terrible. An hour and 26 minutes. You guys don't even know my name. Jay Vix is my name. Um, JVI Mobile Marketing is the company. That's an abbreviation for Jay Vix Incorporated, um, which I, I changed it. So sorry, Lisa. Um, but, uh, Gosh, I'm a little embarrassed about that. Um, but anyway, I'm looking to speak and, and educate. So if you're in a group and you need somebody to come teach, it's a, a lunch and learn or a group, obviously it probably won't happen for the next couple of months, but we could do webinars. If you if you want me to, to talk about this or do a presentation for your group, I'm always happy to do that. Uh, let's see, Wendy, is this session being recorded so we can access it later if needed? Uh, yep. It is, it's gonna be, it should all be recorded and you guys should automatically get a replay link. Um, uh, let's see, Kathy just wrote, can I share my slides? Definitely, I definitely can. Uh, I just ask that you don't go out and sell them to other people, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I mean, not really kidding, but you know, you, there'd be no reason for you to do it. Yes, I am happy to send out and share these slides with everyone that registered. Um, I will download them into a PDF and send it out to everyone who registered. Uh, I, I have the ability to do that, um, and I'd be happy to. Um, let's see. All right. Does anybody else have questions? Looks like we had 27 people out of 43 join, so the other 16 are going to have to watch this later on a replay. Um, but if nobody has any other questions, we're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna give it just another minute or two if you guys wanna type. Let's go over the polls real quick. Let's see, 87.5% of you are still operating business. Lisa, thank you, you're welcome. Um, and Steven said 32, thank you, okay, cool. So 87.5% of you uh, have not been forced to completely close, which means you're still working, which is great. The two of you that have been forced to close completely for now, due to government force uh, shutdown or whatever, uh, let me know, shoot me a message and let me know who you are. And if you want any way, I'll, I'll send a message out and how we can support you. Um, right now, I would be happy to try to work with you to figure out ways uh, to, to help support local businesses right now. Uh, we all need each other to kind of chip in and help each other. Um, that one person, are you more than 50% of your current post sales posts? That one person, I commend you. Uh, but the 16 of you that said no, kudos, congratulations. That's awesome if you guys aren't 
doing just sales posts. You either, you've either been told this a million times, like, like somebody said earlier uh, on all these other ones. Um, uh, but, uh, but that's awesome. And then are you looking for creative ways to create conversations with customers right now? I'm sure. Um, we all are. Uh, I have a, a document that my friend sent me today. My friend, Brian, who's a colleague of mine in Louisiana. Uh, I think he's on this webinar still. Um, but he, uh, he sent me a document and, and said that I could use it to share with people, but it's really some good ideas on what we can be doing right now to talk with customers. If you're in the 15 people that said you were looking for creative ways uh, to create conversations with customers right now, Brian, let me know he is here. Cool. Um, then go um, to this, this bookme.name link, the JVI mobile link. And I'm going to post paste it again down here and copy and paste that into a browser and book a time with me. Let's talk. Let, let me learn more about your business. Let's let's come up with some ways that you can talk with your customers. Maybe it's just maybe you're just missing a piece of software or just a tool. Um, and, and maybe it, that's all you need. Maybe maybe it's just a simple tool or a simple tweak uh, that you can do right now. Maybe some of you it's just it's just that hard is very hard right now. The um, uh, point is I I'm willing to help right now. I want to support this community and uh, do what we can. So uh, Scott, email address again, please. Uh, yeah, I put the link in to book a time with me. My email address, I'll put that in as well, j at jbi mobile.com. There's my email address in the chat. And Stephen, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Somebody else, Michelle, thank you for helping us do this. Um, everybody else, you're welcome. Uh, I'm going to close the webinar down. You guys are all going to get a replay uh, link sent to you, an email that's automatically going to come out. And um, I hope, uh, and, and the slides, and I hope I can help. I hope you guys take me up on my offer of using my SoPro. I hope you take me up on the offer of let's just talk about your business and, and maybe just look at it from a different angle. Um, and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will talk soon. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks, Sharon.